Yeah, y'all, we gotta make sure we give Sister Shaharazad Ali her flowers, man. While she's still here. Man, she went into the Lions then against the heavyweights. That sister went on Geraldo, Sally Jesse Raphael, Donahue. You know, spoke her truth, did back down. I still don't remember another book in my lifetime that was as controversial as her book, The Black Man's Guide to Understanding the Black Woman, which I still do have a copy of, which black feminists framed as a book that was condoning domestic violence against black women, which was not true. But that book right there helped that sister tour the world. You know, she had to fight and defend every word in it. Maybe the last 30 years, right? How old is that book? Where is my copy? So I can look up the date. Hold on, let me look at the date. The book all out of order. How the first page, not the first page. All right, it says The Black Man's Guide to Understanding the Black Woman. Copyright 1989 by Shaharazad Ali. Yeah, 1989. So, um, and what I do remember was there were a lot of mainstream media outlets trying to blackball Sister Shaharazad. They tried to blackball her on those talk shows, but she held strong. But nobody is more guilty of making fun of her and gaslighting Shaharazad Ali than Keenan Ivory Wayans and and live in color. Y'all remember that episode? Yeah, that episode imitating Shaharazad Ali. The black woman's guy. <laughs> yeah, they had her looking like some Muslim extremist kook on there from the Nation of Islam. I wanna play a clip of that real quick. Fair use on this. Yeah, fair use on this. This is for research commentary and educational purposes. Yeah, but this was um, how a living color made fun of Sister Shaharazad Ali. Shaharazad Ali. You've seen her on Donahue. And it's every black man's right to slap a black woman in the mouth. Mm hmm. You've seen her on Sally Jesse Raphael. Oh, mine. A black woman should not complain about sharing her black man. Don't deny you denying it. See, that's a. And you've seen her on Farm Report. Furthermore, if a black hog wants to keep his thigh together, he should slap his black bow in the mouth when she needs it. Don't deny it. She's Shaharazad Ali. See? Y'all already tripping because we all already know that the only person that can chastise and criticize the black woman is white Jesus. And you've seen her on Farm Report. Furthermore, if a black car wants to keep his side together, he should slap his black bow in the mouth when she needs it. Don't deny it. Shisha Harazad Ali, the author of The Black Man's Guide to Understanding the Black Woman. You've read her book. Now, get her new how-to video. This easy-to-follow step-by-step guide will make you, once again, the king of your domain. Find out if you have what it takes with this simple quiz from part one of her video, Lines of Communication. Now, you definitely know they couldn't pull this off today, right? This would be considered misogynoir now. Communication. Hey, babe. Already? No, it's... Oh, boy, you know little Jake went and blew up his Ninja Turtle in the microwave today. And then Aquanetta twisted and broke her ankle trying to do that Vogue dance. So, I mean, I had to rush into the hospital. So I got no dinner. Yup, yup. Come here, baby. Let me show you something real quick. Come here. 
Yeah, babe, what's up? You see this? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. See? She ain't have his dinner ready. You see what he got about to do? He about to smack upside her face. So where's my dinner at? You got two hands and two feet. Mm-hmm. Now, what would you do in this situation? A, take her out to a nice restaurant. B, have dinner at your girlfriend's. Or C, give her an open hand and slap in the mouth. The answer, of course, is C. A good slap in the mouth will train your black woman not to put her trivial concerns over your needs. Total mischaracterization of what she was saying. Total. Completely. You know, and this is the narrative most women ran with. And they ran with it because this is what they wanted to see. You know, I don't know who got in Keenan Ivory Wayne's pockets and made him do this. But, but then again, he's a gatekeeper. You know, and yeah, yeah, and they did more than one episode. This was just one of the episodes they did on her. I wonder how she felt about it. I've never seen anybody interview her and ask her about that. What, what do you think about the living color um, imitation of her? Yeah, that'd be a good interview. Maybe somebody need to find that out. The answer, of course, is C. A good slap in the mouth will train your black woman not to put her trivial concerns over your needs. <laughs> Situation number two. Your wife finds out you're having an affair. With my own sister? Look, I... What do they just doing... Doing the blue-collar brother dirty. <laughs> Tommy Davidson, you foul, man. You see, they got him with the work shirt on, the whole work overalls. Damn, bro. Mm -mm -mm. And, and see, this is why brothers can't get a break now. Because women remember this. This is subliminally implanted in their head because everybody watched and live in color and they have visions and flashbacks of this crap. With my own sister? Look, I... What do you give your wife? A, a dozen long stem roses. B, the necklace you were going to give your girlfriend. Or C, an open-handed slap in the mouth. Now, if you said C, you're well on your way to becoming king. Now, here's a tough one. Your wife does something nice. And I say it's tough because a black woman ain't going to never do nothing nice for a black man. She's sneaky, and if she does something nice, it's a trick. Watch her. And I say it's tough because a black woman ain't going to never do nothing nice for a black man. She's sneaky, and if she does something nice, it's a trick. Watch her. Hey, baby. I got you two tickets to the Lakers game. Let me see those. See? See? That's where they get it from right there. You know, that's where they get this whole ideology. It don't even matter if you do anything nice for them. All they're going to do is turn around and... So, so really, so so that's what dudes is doing. For, for their woman coming in the door with exclusive hard-to-get Lakers tickets, dudes is slapping their woman up, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it was all jokes, and it was all funny when we were watching it, but little shows like this and episodes like this and skits like this had negative repercussions as far as the relationships of communication with black men and black women. Like, in my opinion... Because even if you was going to throw out 75% of Shaharazad Ali's book, there was still some qualities in it that black women should have actually took heed to. And YouTube, stop playing games too. I call fair use. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of Copyright Act 1976. Uh, allowances made for fair use for purposes such as criticism. What am I doing right now? Criticizing it and commenting. So kick rocks. You can non-monetize it, but I don't want to hear nothing about no copyright strikes, YouTube. Fair use. I got you two tickets to the Lakers game. Let me see those. Do you A, thank her and ask her if she'd like to join you, B, thank her and take your girlfriend, or C, give her an open-handed slap in the mouth? The answer is B and C. Before you take your girlfriend, remember this. An unexpected slap never hurts. Now, if you answered any of these questions correctly, you're ready to move on to part two, putting the man back in manhandling, featuring actual demonstrations by real experts such as Mike Tyson and Ike Turner. Order my video, A Black Man's Rights, Lefts, and Uppercuts. Make yeah, I never really liked this episode. I didn't like it when it originally aired. You know, I felt like it undermined her message 
and undermined the conversation that needed to be had in the black community as far as black male and female relationships go. And it hyper sensitized the domestic violence, domestic discipline conversation. You know, a black man's right, lefts, and uppercuts. This book triggered a lot of women, not just black women, but black women mostly, you know, and a lot of the women are still triggered by this book today. You know, and that's why I divested Zealot and her merry band of wire hanger witches gave Shahrazad Ali the Lifetime Mammy Achievement Award. Called her the biggest sellout in coon in black female history. Yes, they did in black female history. <laughs> and, and believe you me, it was shows and skits like this that contributed to the way some of these black women feel about Shahrazad Ali and her book and her message. And some men. There are female identifying males that also had issues with her book. Beta boys. Video. A black man's rights, lefts, and uppercuts. Make your wife buy it today. If she hesitates, you know what to do. Hey, I was watching that. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah? Well, you're gonna be. <laughs> yeah, there she is. Miss Strong and Independent. Can't tell her nothing. Right? She can do anything. You know, even though a, a, a tree trunk neck sized meatloaf howitzer cannon arm negro out the window. <laughs> a dude that'll probably beat most of our behinds. No, nope, no, nope, that strong independent black woman tossed him right out the window. Shaharazad Ali that. And uppercuts. Make your wife buy it today. If she hesitates, you know what to do. Hey, I was watching that. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah? Well, you're gonna be. <laughs> yeah, Shaharazad Ali wasn't the only person that got duped by that skit. Black men and black women in relationship communications took a hit because of that skit. And it's also showed um, the stark contrast and the difference in between the thinking of what would be considered patriarchal minded Muslim women and matriarchal Christian black women is a big difference. Most Muslim women are from a patriarchal family and most black women that are Christians are from a single mother dynamic. Right. But. Yeah, they did a hit job on her reputation. Um, they did the same thing with Farrakhan. They made fun of Farrakhan, but not as foul. You know, they, they, they made fun of him, but they didn't run him through the ringer like Miss Ali. Farrakhan skit actually rocked. Like, it was actually a good skit because of the outcome, right? Yeah, they did that with the Wrath of Farrakhan on Star Trek. Yeah, that's actually probably, if you ask me, one of the top 20 probably comedy skits in history. Yeah, the Wrath of uh, Farrakhan. That, that's probably one of the top 20 comedy skits. Name me 20 comedy skits better than that one. Yeah, I'm going to play that. We're going to fair use that right now. Yeah. Pull that up. YouTube overlords, hear me now. I rebuke you, Satan. Be gone. Fair use, God damn it. And this is criticism and commentary at its finest. This is 
the intent of the fair use statute. Thank you very much. So yeah, let's watch that. We're gonna watch the Wrath of Farrakhan from In Living Color. Look at the difference between how they did Farrakhan and how they did Sister Shahrazad Ali. Captain's log, start A14. We're being pulled towards a hostile planet. I'm hoping that Scotty will be able to activate the backup control system. Good, I feel so vulnerable. Captain, I'm picking up some strange signals. Something about intergalactic oppressors, sir. Something about intergalactic oppressors, sir. Captain, intruders are approaching the bridge, sir. <laughs> intergalactic oppressors. <laughs> It's stupid. <laughs> it was actually genius to make Spock black in this skit, right? Because I always thought Spock was like a metaphor for that smart nigga that they won't let shine. You know, that nigga that they hide under the stairs, right? Or the spook that sat behind the door, you know? Yeah, I always thought Spock was a metaphor for that black dude that they had to keep caged up. Metaphorically speaking. Oppressors, sir. Captain, intruders are approaching the bridge, sir. Who are you? I am the Minister Louis Farrakhan. Genius. Genius. It was pure genius. <laughs> I bet you Farrakhan loved this skit. He took this skit as a badge of honor. <laughs> Right? Even though they did, mainstream media knew not to play with him or, or go too far. <laughs> the Wrath of Farrakhan. Like I said, probably top 20 comedy skit of all time. And Jim Carrey did his thing as Captain Kirk. I think that was the most classic performance of Captain Kirk ever. Spock! Spock! Who is he? A former Calypso singer, Captain, who later became leader of a 20th century African-American religious sect known as the Nation of Islam. Would you like to buy some incense? Bean pie, my brother? No, thank you. What do you want? Now, that might have been the only part right there that was close to what I guess you would deem disrespectful or mocking them. You know, what? That is part of the nation of Islam, incense and bean pies. So they did have to put it in there. I guess it would be disappointing if they didn't, right? I've come to warn your crew, warn your, your crew, crew of their enslavement, enslavement. enslavement. aboard this vessel. Mm -hmm. That's poppycock. These people are perfectly free to do anything they like. It is that same lie that kept Elvis the king. That made that poor child Latoya Jackson think she could sing. <laughs> it is that same lie that's got white boys rapping and the fat boys acting. Hey, mister, you can go in here and talk to me like that. <laughs> Ahura, get me starfleet command. Yes, Captain. <laughs> <laughs> you saw him carrying out? You heard him? What was that? Give me, Uhura, get me starfleet command. <laughs> Get the police. <laughs> Captain Kirk, Jim Carrey was the first Karen. <laughs> he said, Oh, hurry, get me the police. Get Starfleet Command. <laughs> Call the police on your own black man. <laughs> oh, hurry, get me Starfleet Command. Yes, Captain. <laughs> oh, my Nubian princess. How long have you placed his cause? I watch the show every week, and all I see is the back of your nappy wig. Ooh, ooh, he done did it now. We all know there is one thing you do not talk about, and that is the black woman's wig. Mm-mm-mm. Oh, yeah, y'all really going too far on this skit. Nubian. Oh, hold on. 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 Oh, hold on.
European princess. How long have you placed his cause? I watch the show every week, and all I see is the back of your nappy wig. Aurora, Starfleet, no! But wait a second. He's right. I've been sitting here for 15 years with this damn thing in my ear. It ain't got one raise yet. Is that all I'm good for? To be your little secretary? Or your occasional chocolate fantasy? Or your occasional chocolate fantasy? You your little secretary or your occasional chocolate fantasy you get up off your flat butt and get starfleet your damn self because i ain't budget well maybe you know and living color was type prophetic right lieutenant uhura was a divester and a swirler Mr. Zulu, call Scotty. Tell him to get this man out of here. Oh, he went to the Asian man to do it. Ah, yeah. He tried to use reverse Asian hate. Wait a minute, Mr. Zulu. Before you touch that dial, answer me this question. Who does the laundry around here? I do. Mr. Zulu. Well, you call me Buddha head and pie face in front of everybody. Wow. I've been in space all this time. Wow. Buddha head and pie face. You definitely couldn't pull this skit off today. Mm -mm -mm. Wow. I've been in space all this time and I haven't had one woman yet. You even take the ugly ones, Captain. <laughs> are about to explode i want to do the nasty <laughs> that's right rise up mr spock that's right rise up they got farrakhan back to you <laughs> he's so farrakhan <laughs> He's sowing dissension amongst the whole crew. <laughs> That's right, rise up, rise up, rise up. <laughs> Mr. Spock, my friend, we've got to do something. Why do you say we, Caucasoid? Why do you say we, Caucasoid? <sighs> you know what? I'm going to leave it alone. I'm just going to leave it alone. I've decided to leave it alone. I, I'm just going to leave it alone. I'm going to let it be what it is. It is what it is, right? Okay. I'll leave that one alone. It's obvious, Captain, that Minister Farrakhan is right. It's obvious, Captain, that Minister Farrakhan is right. Spunk, are you out of your falcon mind? Logically speaking, Captain, I am the strongest and most intelligent person aboard this vessel, yet I'm only second in command. Mm -hmm. I should be Captain, and I'm also a better director than you. <laughs> Can't you see it's discrimination? Get him, Farrakhan. Yeah, yeah, the ideal of Farrakhan was a beautiful thing, wasn't it? The, the whole ideal of Farrakhan, the whole ideal of the nation of Islam was a beautiful thing. If it hadn't fill in the blanks, you would fill in the blank with your own. You know, the nation of Islam would have been if it hadn't, if it hadn't excommunicated and facilitated the death of brother minister Malcolm X. If it hadn't excommunicated and exiled and most likely facilitated the death of Father Law Clarence 13 X, Peace of the Gods and Earth, as well as excommunicated and exiled Khalid Muhammad and most likely facilitated, you get the point. Mm -hmm. I should be captain, and I'm also a better director than you. <laughs> Can't you see? 
discrimination. You Can't you see it's discrimination? You get off my ship, buddy. Put your Damn, did Captain Kirk just try to shoot Farrakhan? Black Lives Matter. Put your puny weapon down, Captain. You cannot harm me. My people have survived 400 years of slavery. Slavery! 300 years of apartheid. Apartheid! And 25 years of the Jeffersons in syndication. <laughs> Go to your room. Uh -huh. Go to your room. Uh -huh. Oh, I love it when I do that to them. <laughs> Nubian princess, call Sylvia Soul Food Shack, make reservations. I got a taste for some blackened white fish. <laughs> Mr. Sulu, what are you going to have? Sylvia. Well, all right then, my horny Asian brother, Warp Factor 5. We're going home, destination 125th Street. Yeah, and that's the nightmare that, that a conscious pro-black black man gave white people back then. Anybody was dealing with any semblance of pro-black consciousness, right? And then they turned us all to Billy Porter. <laughs> so, <laughs> YouTube overlords, beat it. This is fair use. There's nothing over here to see. You can demonetize the video because my channel isn't monetized. So do with it as you please, but I don't want to hear nothing about no copyright strikes. All right? Fair use. So leave y'all's comments in the comment section. I know um, a lot of y'all remember this skit, and, and we probably all thought the same thing. You know, uh, I meant to do an episode about it earlier. You know, I just got a chance to actually do it. So, um, and, I, and I think there's some other skits they might have right along these lines. You know, and I'll definitely look them up. Uh, they did one Farrakhan and Al Sharpton, too. Yeah, yeah, don't let me forget that one. What was it? The 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 Al Sharpton and and Lou Farrakhan comedy hour. Yes, they did. Lou Farrakhan. They called him They called him Lou Farrakhan. Yeah. Let me play five seconds to that one and then I'm out. Yo, Boga TV. Hit that like, man. Hit that like button, share, subscribe, I'm trying to fight the shadow band. All right, Bunker TV, I'm out. Yo, peace to Sister Shaharazad Ali. Farrakhan, I don't know about you. Mr. Farrakhan, I'm certainly looking forward to the game today. Well, Al Sharpton, the regular manager of the baseball team, is sick today. And the owner wants... I don't know. I could be wrong. But this is a play on that old skit. Uh, that black and white skit. Is it, is it Laurel and Hardy? Is it Abbott and Costello? Yeah, that who's on first skit. Yeah, yeah, yeah to the game today. Well, Al Sharpton, the regular manager of the baseball team, is sick today. And the owner wants you to fill in. 
And it's important that you become familiar with all the players' names, especially since some of them are a little strange. Oh, I'm done. That's right, I'm down at six, so you'll be taking his place. Say what? Say what's over in right field. So who's on first? No Jews on first. Says who? The owner, Whitey. Whitey's on the team? That's right. With Jews on first, the man on second, Mr. Charlie is shortstop, and it's a conspiracy at third. Now, wait a minute. Who's at shortstop? Mr. Charlie. But now, isn't that a conspiracy? No, a conspiracy's at third. So then who's at first? No, Jews on first. Preach on. Preach on his pitch. Say what, my brother? Say what's right, Phil. My brother is catching. So, now, my brother's catching right on. So where's the conspiracy? Preach on. No, right on is in left field. A conspiracy's at third, and my brother is catching. Preach on. Preach on. That's right, preach on. Amen. It's playing center field. <laughs> Yeah, how far do you think the YouTube overlords are going to let me take this? Yeah, Bunker TV, I'm out. And live in color. And live in color. You gatekeeping. Y'all should be ashamed of yourselves. If the revolution turns into a shit show. <laughs>Yeah, the way they played it and the way they stereotyped it, they should have just named it the Black Man's Guide to Slapping the Black Woman. That's almost what they were implying, right? <laughs>